Right then, let's see how gold wood and red resin go together. Alright then, on the lathe I have a piece of Malaysian acacia. Anybody who's seen me torn it before knows that it's kind of, it has lots of gold flashes in it and stuff. Now this piece had a few problems. There were cracks in it and voids and everything else, right? There was a massive one across there. There was one there, there was one up here. Uh, so what I've done is I've filled it with red resin because I think it might look nice. Now there are certain places where I might have a bit of a problem like there. Right, there's some cracks in it that were basically too small for resin. There's one there, and there's one on the face. But what I'll do is I'll uh, fill them with CA and sawdust. Uh, I'm trying a few new things in this video. I'm after getting some new camera mounts, which should hopefully improve the angles that uh, the shots were at. And um, I'm after getting something rather special for the bottom of my... Uh, Put it for the bottom of my higher end bowls and I'll show you that and tell you where to get it it's one of the cheapest and best versions I've seen uh, I think a really good value all right so what I'll do is we'll get this going round it off I'm gonna put a mortise and a foot on this bowl because I think I've said this before when I'm doing resin I like the light to get all the way under the bowl so that it makes the resin kind of shine a bit. Right, so I'll set up for doing that and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, the marks and the foot is in it. So now we're going to start shaping. As normal, take the corner off. Slow. Take the corner off so I can put the tool that's where I want it to be. base over to the foot. Right. Look at the hooks, I think I need to sharpen my gouge, I do. Right, so it's all tired now there, so I definitely need to sharpen the gouge. Right, I have a crack showing there, so I'm going to have to fill that. I'll put CA in that before I go and sharpen the gouge. Because then it can be going off. So this piece of wood is lovely, but it does have a few problems. And the odds are all that was going to be torn away. But just for safety, because it's a crack, and I'm going to stiffen it up while I'm turning. Right, put an edge on this and I'll be right back. Right then, I have a new edge, and the tool rest is where I want it to be, so I'll just put it.
Now this bowl took a lot more resin than I thought it would. Especially kind of there. Um, I don't know how deep that one is, but I'm hoping that it's deep enough that it'll show. If not, I'm just going to end up with an, uh, a normal relation acacia bowl, which is not a bad thing. the thing you never know after you find your foot on the crack how deep it is gonna go Could have this plan in your head for a fantastic looking bowl with resin running through it. And by the time you get down to the end, the resin's on you. It happens. Accept it and go on. Right, I'll do a cold cut so I can get that core down to that. All the way down into the uh, foot. push <sighs> shavings are hot coming off that which means this gouge needs a sharpening even though I've only got that much left I'm going to sharpen the gouge because you don't cut with an unsharp gouge. I might bring that curve down there a bit more. Though. Much better. Yeah, I'm going to curve that a little bit more. Doesn't look right. Yeah, it's a much better curve in there now. Yeah, it's a much better curve in there now. Now that I finish cut again. close the top on this one a bit the bump fire
Right then. Now, it's time to finish that. And I'll get back. Uh, I'll be back and I'll show you the new thingy I'm putting on the bottom. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, just both on the wax off. Uh, turned out quite nice. I don't know if that resin is going to go all the way through to the inside. Hopefully it does. Uh, right, it's a question I've got the last few times is what happens when I basically turn the cameras off to do, to do the sanding and stuff, right? Um, I did a video on my finishing routine a couple of years ago. I'll leave a link up there and a link below to it if you're interested. Um, but I completely, did, basically, it's a deep dive into my finishing routine. So if you want to know what I do when the camera's off, there's your answer. And that is really pretty. The gold flashes up here in this one are gorgeous. Right. You can see it's, there's a couple of dark lines there, but that's from where it, I think, is starting to go off. See the way around here is very dark. I think that's the same up there. But that gold flash up there is gorgeous. Right now, we're going to go on to this thing, new thing that I'm going to use on the bottoms. Right, and what they are, are these. Right. They're a stainless steel maker's mark. Right. Now, there's a mate up in the north who's making these. Right. And um, what he's charging is, he's charging 150 sterling for orders over 30. And if you order 50 or over, you get one of these free tins while stocks last to keep them in, which is very handy. The new logo there that some of you might have noticed, the white one, actually is from the top of this tin. Uh, and when I seen it, I went, I know exactly where that's going. Right, but as I said, these are new stainless steel makers, Mark. The quality is brilliant. So Paul is making them. And you can contact Paul through the occasional Woodcraft Facebook page. Just message him. Right, I'll leave a link below to it. And he'll deliver anywhere. Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, kind of thing. Right, and uh, at 150 sterling, these are the best price I've actually seen for these. And uh, so if you're looking for some, Give Paul a shout and he will sort you out. Right, now stick this thing in. So first thing I gotta do is obviously cut a hole for it. Right, now what I'm gonna do is I have the calipers set wherever I put them. Oh, there they are. Right, <coughs> for just below the size of that. Right. Yep. The small parting tool, it's the sharpest and it's the best for this. Slightly low. Right. And what I want to do is go inside that mark. I don't want to go too deep. It's just deep enough for the micro's mark. perfectly flat so that when I put it in it stays now the reason I'm doing this after the finish is I don't want anything in between this and the glue I'm going to use to put it in so I want the finish off of this right, now I'm just going to creep up on it Sure that the cut is perfectly square. I'm going to spend a little bit of time just creeping up on this to make sure that it just sits in nicely. And 
remember when you're doing something like this whatever you take off one side you're actually taking off double there we go perfect fit right well, maybe not no it's barely barely it's just a little tight but a push we'll put it in right and that's gonna go in there right take it out if i can Out of behind it, gosh, right, right. So there's the hole ready for that, right? And I'll put that in when the piece is finished. Now we flip it over and hollow it, and I'll be back for that. All right, then let's get the hollow in this. The beeping you can hear is my helmet, it needs charging. Right, so, first thing, flatten it off. And flatten it off and then hollow it. that's running through it. Right, define the width. Biggish bowl, so biggish width. Right. And then we get the hollow one as, as normal, if nothing happens. Or go straight up the video. And we get this hollow. Right, some of the resin is starting to show up here so that resin may be a lot deeper than I think it is as I said at the start it swallowed quite a lot so I'm going to cut that I'll give this a sharp and get a decent finish cut now. if you ever do get a piece of this Malaysian acacia it suffers really badly from shake So, uh, you really want to make sure your finished books are good. I'm losing a bit there. I think I'm going to put some CA in that before I lose any more of it. There's a knot just there that is uh, not behaving. So, I'm going to put a little bit of CA in that to make sure I don't lose any more of it. See, it's just there and not and it's not behaving properly I'm just going to put some CA into it make sure I don't get it on the outside because the outside is finished and I'm going to have to there's a chip after coming out of that so I'm going to have to cut that down to below the chip I'm going to give the outside of this a quick wipe just in case any of that CA went through. Well, it shouldn't have. Jordan, Jordan. Right then. Now, I'm going to recut this edge till I get rid of that chunk that's coming out. 
That was very slow. Feels like the chunk is gone. One wants to do it. You see the way that that's tearing there. That's the shape I was telling you about. Malaysian acacia is terrible for it. Right, that's got it. Right. Now we'll continue hauling. Now I'm going to hit that with the negative rate scraper because I don't like that there, that kind of finish. So I'm going to hit it with the negative rate scraper. Hit in there with the carboid. Yeah, I do. Right, I'm gonna hit in there with the round carboid because that resin is not getting the finish I want on it. Same finish as the negative rake, it does. Right now, I'm not happy with that. See that little bit of tear out just there, I'm not happy with that. And against the cardboard that's doing that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen this and give another final cut just to get rid of that tear out. Nice fresh edge, and just a very light cut to get rid of that tear out. I prefer standard tools over carboids, less terrible. Right, I'll sand it, finish the inside of that, and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, just buffing the wax off, and I tell you, that was a nightmare to sand. I actually ended up cutting it another three times to try and get a decent finish on it. I'll show you what the problem was now as soon as I stop it. Eventually it turned out pretty. And as you see here, all along here, getting a decent cut around that was a nightmare altogether. Um, but a bit of perseverance and we eventually got a decent finish on it. 
Now, as I said at the start, I put a lot of resin into this. And the only resin that's visible is a slight stripe there and a slight stripe there. As I was cutting it, I noticed that an awful lot of the resin was, say, here. So obviously what there was is there was this crack and there was a void here. And I turned away quite a lot of the resin. So basically, this bowl ate the resin on me. But it happens, you don't know what's inside a piece of wood until you actually go cutting into it. Right? I was hoping for a, like a big slash of red across it, but ended up not. As I said, you don't know what's inside one of these until you start cutting it. Right then, I'll take it off the light, put the maker's mark in, and give you a better look at it. So, I'll be back in a second. Right then, there we have it. A very nice 13 and a half, well no, it's actually not 13 and a half, it's 13 by four and a quarter Malaysian acacia bowl. As I said, there's only a tiny little bit of the red showing. There's a little bit there, there's a little bit there, and there's a tiny bit in the bottom. For the amount of resin I put into this, that's crazy. I said, the bowl just hit it. Um, no, I said, nightmare to finish the bottom of that, but eventually. And there is one of Paul's really nice maker's marks in the bottom of it. As I said, I'll leave a link below to where you can contact Paul. I said, oh, uh, for orders over 30, 150, I think, that's basically for a, make, for a stainless steel maker's mark, that's nothing. That's for nothing, that is. Um, and the quality of them is fantastic. Right, so if you like that one, I, you got that nailed it. If you wouldn't mind clicking like on the video, and I'll see you in the next one.